All right, now what I want us to do is now have a look at uh, a kind of question within this world, right? So we're going to have a look at these, but let me get this out of the way. As mentioned, M1.1 and M1.4, the common thing is about finance, but actually there are a bunch of questions that are even not financial that are still within the scope of the syllabus. Actually, I should bring it back just to prove it so you know I'm not making it up. Here's M1.4, uh, there we go. The title says financial applications of sequence and series. And then I just want you to have a look closely at this sentence right here. It asks you to use geometric sequences to model and analyze practical problems. Any type of situation, regardless of whether it includes money or not. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, involving exponential growth and decay. So that is what we are going to do right now. I'm going to shut up and get out of your way. Here's a question. You know everything you need to know. But we're going to take all that APGP and stuff that you looked at, and we're going to try and apply it. I'll do it up on the board for you, but I think you have enough knowledge and skill to at least make a start. Okay, so I'm going to give you a three, four minute head start. Give it a whirl, and then we'll do it together on the board. Any questions? Okay, now not everyone's finished, but most people are. So here's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to talk you through my solution. Okay. I'm hopeful that most of you have the right answer, but as I've wondered, not a single one of you has set out your solution the way I have. That doesn't mean your answer is wrong, it just means we've set it out differently, and I'm going to make an argument for why the way that I'm going to set it out is the way that I set it out. Okay? Now, just look up for a minute, this bit's important. I'm going to work you through part A, part B. Okay? As I do so, here are the two things that I want you to be doing while I'm going through these parts. Okay. Actually, first I should tell you the thing I don't want, I want you not to be doing. I don't want you to be writing anything. Okay. So I want pens out of hands as I work, work through. You've already got a solution in front of you, right? So in all likelihood, it's, it's fine. Okay. I don't want you to be writing. Here are the two things I do want you to do. Okay. Number one, I want you to think about why have I set it out in the way that I have? I will just say, I haven't seen anyone do it this way, but it's, it's not a major difference. I'll let you have a think about why it's there. The second thing is, what do you think is the most common mistake that students make when doing this question? Okay, I'm going to, after I finish going through this, I'm going to give you two or three minutes to turn to the person next to you or behind or in front of you, and I want you to answer that question to each other. We think the main thing that people get wrong is this. The thing that I'm probably going to get wrong under exam conditions in a few months' time is going to be this. I guarantee you, I've got two significant ones that I'm going to pull out, and I wonder if we will agree, or if we can come up with more than two, right? So, pay attention to the differences in the way I've set it out, and what do you think is going to be the, the main like stumbling block for people? All right, let's look at the question. Uh, they're selling soft drinks, and soft drinks are going out of fashion, apparently. Um, they need to move into energy drinks, evidently. So, it's declining by 6% every year. That's an important clue. The question doesn't tell you what kind of progression, like doesn't word it, right? But you can tell from that 6% number what kind of progression we're interested in. What is it? Geometric. It's geometric, thank you, right? If it were arithmetic, what kind of thing would we see instead? Not 6%, it might be something like? Something more. Some number of bottles, 100 bottles every year, 1,000 bottles, whatever it happens, okay? So it's constant every year, but this 6%, it's changing, right? Okay, great. In 2016, 50,000 bottles were used. So I'm immediately going to write down N and year, right? 2016 is my first year. I'm going to write down, therefore, T1. The actual thing I'm interested in is not the year, it's the number of bottles. So I'm going to write down 50,000 at this point. So far, so good? OK, great. I'm just going to do this real quick. I barely need to think about this, but I'm writing it down to establish a pattern for myself because what I want to get to is 2025. What's the N for 2025? It's 10. The way I know it's 10 is, and by the way, I don't actually write this down. That's why I've pulled out a different color, but I do think this, and I'm going to write it down now for, for your benefit, right? 2025 to 2016 is actually a pretty easy number to calculate, but sometimes you get like weird gross numbers and you're like, I don't want to think about this. So you reach for your calculator, right? If I do 2025, 2016, that's minus 9. Do you agree? 
So therefore, to get up to the appropriate n, I'm going to add 9. Is that okay? 9, 9, that's how I know what the right n is. Okay? Now, we already knew before we started that Tn in general is, what's our formula for? Uh, you told me it was a geometric progression, so what's my general formula? Fantastic, okay. So therefore, through this table, I know, I mean, you don't have to draw a table, but I know the particular n I'm interested in is this one, right? What's A? 50,000. 50, what's R? 0.94. That's the one takeaway, 0.06, but I'm happy. You, I would go straight there as well. I think that's totally fine. And I raise that to the power of? Happy? Okay. Now, um, I think you've already calculated this. What did we get? 28,649. Say that number one more time. 28,649. 28,649. Okay. Now, I'm going to put in approximately 28,649. There's an intervening line that I would normally write. And I know some of you wrote it. What would be the line before this one? The calculator readout. So can someone go ahead and give it to me? Okay, great. And then this would be to the nearest bottle. Okay, now, this is excellent. Okay, I, I'm, I'm hearing some discussion. Some of you didn't write 649 at the bottom. What did you write? Okay, at this point, I'm going to pause. I asked you to have a think about number one, how I set out the problem. I will show you B in a minute, but actually, there's enough here. Okay. I'm going to ask you to turn and talk. What do you think? I mean, maybe you want to resolve this. You have a talk about which one you think it is. And then I want you to have a conversation about what do you think is the, the common error that comes out of this question, OK? About three minutes, have a conversation. OK. So um, ordinarily, at this point, I would throw to the room because I, I, I know there are a bunch of different answers represented in your discussions, okay? I've been watching the clock and because of assembly, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to kind of cut to the chase, okay? So I'll, I'll come to this in a moment. I will tell you right now, and it's the reason why I drew a table and not a single one of you did. Did I? Did you? I didn't, I didn't see one. Okay. This error here, right? This minus 9 plus 9, like identifying the wrong term, okay? This is an error that happens so often we give it a name. It's called the fence post error. You might be able to guess why it's called that. If I asked you to make a fence and it was five meters long, right? Five meters long. How many fence posts do you need? And the answer is not five fence posts because you'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, and then six to make it five meters long. Are you following? Right? So this is off by one thing. It can happen up. It can happen down. It happens all the time, right? And you will lose a mark instantly, right? That's why I do this, because I am semi-paranoid about myself. Like This makes the argument very quickly. And I talked it through for you. It's actually very quickly, quick to do, and then you get the right end. That's all I want to do. Okay? That's error number one. Error number two is down here. Okay? Now, there is some amount of interpretation here, but I'm going to make my case for you for why, in fact, 28,650 is probably the best answer here. And in fact, not just the best answer. In this context, it's the right answer. Okay? This, and indeed this, this is a model for understanding how many bottles they're going to sell. Right? It's a model, right? 6% that it drops every time, right? This is not a way to calculate, say, for example, as we will later, uh, how much money you've got and how much interest you're earning. Okay? We are closest to 650, so the model will say, all right, I'm just going to approximate this is probably the number of bottles that we're selling because the 6% thing is sort of a guess. Does this make sense? Okay. Now this is extremely different to, let's suppose I owed the bank $100, right? And then I was like, how much am I repaying? And by T10, I've repaid this amount. Dot, dot, dot. I want you to think about why this is different to the bottles being sold. Again, it's a model, isn't it? Right? So like, it's obviously not 0 .00 whatever. Okay? But at this point, I'm going to say you absolutely cannot round to the closest, not even the closest dollar, it's the closest cent. Right? Why can't I round in this case? Does anyone want to make an argument for me? 
Is anyone going to work for a bank in the future? There's a lot of money to be made. What's, uh, what's the answer? When I do the subtraction, what's the answer? And some other stuff, right? You think the bank's going to let you go on that? Not a chance. You are still in debt, my friend, okay? And they will keep you going till the next time period, right?